Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 3 of my travels. This week I'm in Limousin in France, learning more about organic permaculture farming. This week was very emotionally challenging for me, but it was super beneficial, so I wanted to share some of that with you guys, along with what I've learned practically at the farm. So, let's get to it. What's up guys? So, this last week has been very different to weeks before, in that it was very challenging for me emotionally. It's very interesting, I don't know if you guys believe in law of attraction or anything like that, but as a few of you know, anyway, I have been trying to work on my emotions and more recently trying to accept uh, my facade. So I had prayed before coming to the next place that I would have an opportunity to feel more and to have just my own space to to be able to feel my emotions without kind of being distracted or not being willing to feel it in front of other people. And sure enough, I got exactly that, which brought up feelings of entitlement, of feeling like I shouldn't, yeah, I shouldn't have to do things, even though I'm just there to like help out and volunteer. <laughs> and the emotions were brought up by jobs like digging uh, channels or ditches or redigging them or digging up paths, which is very labor intensive and very monotonous for me, although satisfying afterwards, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I, yeah, just really noticed a lot of these angry, demanding feelings coming up. So it was very difficult, but I've definitely become a lot clearer on where I am at and how much I really want to feel and how much I don't want to feel. And just trying to get to a place of having a lot more compassion for that. Maybe to give you a bit more of a backstory about what the hell I'm talking about, it's difficult to know just how detailed and how deep to go into this because obviously for some people it might, you might just be like, what the hell are you talking about? Which I could very much understand. But basically over the last few years I've just come to realize how important um, feeling your emotions are and being real with your emotions. Um, how important that is to finding real happiness versus addiction. So that's anything from, as you guys will know, with obviously drugs, drink, but then all the way down to like, for me, it's like addictions of like feeling like a nice guy, wanting to avoid emotions because I believe that, <laughs> like emotionally on like a soul level kind of thing, I don't believe that it's ha had good things come of it because of what's happened to me in like my childhood and growing up, just as happened to all of us. We're all taught to, not feel our emotions, to stop crying, to be a good kid and everything like that. So I'm trying to undo all of that is basically the idea. It's come through being told about these teachings called Divine Truth, um, which I've been listening to and trying to kind of implement in my life for the last few years. And every time I do, it's extremely rewarding. But for most of the time, if I'm being honest, it's been a very resistive battle and a lot of it has just been facade because I've had the belief that I will never get what I'm hoping for out of life, which is the happiness, which is connection, everything like that. If I am this real part of me that has all these flaws and all these negative, like unloving emotions, like selfishness, like entitlement, like superiority, and issues with like, Issues with competition is another big one for me, and uh, it's all of this kind of stuff that I've just realized over the years. And working on them in the way that they teach in Divine Truth has literally been the only times where I've really felt like pure happiness and genuine happiness, and it's like everlasting as well. I've only done it very few amount of times. It's always really rewarding, and it's all about feeling your emotions because they're stored within you and they're in there already because they've been in there since you were a child most likely and then they, you've just kind of built on them from there so it's all about undoing all of that like unraveling it all if you like so <laughs> I think that pretty much covers it for now back to farm work to be more specific so what I actually learned at the farm was number one is digging trenches, digging small like channels for the water to flow around so that all of the water doesn't rush off the land. Basically because we've destroyed a lot of our lands, nature is trying to 
rejuvenate itself but at the same time we've done so much damage that the land really struggles to actually absorb the water because of how bad we've ruined the soil so one of the techniques is building these trenches which then go to wells and then you have these mulch piles things like that that absorb all the water so it's all about trying to store the water that you have and that was done by just digging with a shovel and then it just goes down for a while follows in a bit of a zigzag to just collect some water number two was about uh, leaves and how to compost them and that the way that Phil was doing it on the farm was that he was separating them because leaves take about six months to decompose and they do it at a different time so it's good to keep them separate so that then as soon as the leaves are ready then you also combine it with the other compost that is also ready at the same time and another thing is that it's very good for planting seeds using that soil because it's very light and very nutrient rich I think don't quote me on that. Number three was the fact that worms really love your food waste. So putting that food on the surface of your soil that attracts loads of worms and worms can eat their entire body weight per day and turn that into amazing soil. So the more worms you have obviously the better soil condition that you have. So that's a really great thing to have. So you want all the worms. That's why worm farms are so great. Number four was how he made his beds for gardening and planting things was that first of all he would cut brambles down and then leave that on the bed sometimes if it downhill you would make some wooden supports so that it's like wooden beams then some brambles and then he would dig up the earth and put the earth on top of the brambles and then let that all decompose now i did research afterwards and Someone was saying that it's better to leave the brambles in there because they're trying to balance the soil out. So it's up to you, obviously do your research. I'm just saying what I've learned here. Number five was something called coppicing, which you guys might have heard of before, but it's a very incredible thing that you can do with trees, small like thin trees. Um, as they're a shrub, a shrub? Do I mean shrub? As they're a thin tree, they're growing up they get to a certain height and you can actually cut into them so if you imagine this is the tree and then you cut into it at like a 45 or steeper angle and then you bend the wood over and you can lie that on the ground that will stay alive and then the tree will also sprout a new root up which is incredible so you can do things like fences or you can do different weaving or anything like that um, it's a pretty incredible thing that nature can do. The trees that he told me that were good were hazel, coppice and willow trees. Then the last thing he told me about was Syntropy. He was telling me about there's a good documentary called Life in Syntropy. It's a documentary or a book, I can't remember. But anyway, about how to replicate nature and to work to your advantage as well. So all things to be researched, but that is pretty much it for this week. Um, so as I say, yeah, I was very emotionally difficult and confronting and quite physically difficult as well but it was a really great learning experience and I got to stay in an epic cabin with a log burner which was the dream. <laughs> right that's it for this week catch you on the next one.